everyone. Welcome to CSEC Mathematics with Mr. Charles. Today we are looking at the January 2018 paper 2 past paper question 1 on the topic computation and consumer arithmetic. Part 1 of A says using a calculator or otherwise calculate 5.5 divided by 3 and 2 thirds plus 1 and 4 feet, giving your answer as a fraction in its lowest terms. Now, 5.5 can be rewritten as an improper fraction, okay, which is 11 over 2. Okay, 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11, so we get 11 over 2 divided by 3.5 which is the same as 11 over 3 because 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11 so we get 11 over 3 okay and then plus 1 and 4 fifths 1 and 4 fifths can be written as an improper fraction which is 9 over 5 5 times 1 is 5 plus 4 is 9 so we will have 11 over 2 divided by 11 over 3 plus 9 over 5 Following the order of operations, board mass, we have to divide before we add. So, we start by saying 11 over 2 divided by 11 over 3. When we are dividing fractions, we have to change the division sign to a multiplication sign. After doing that, we have to flip or reciprocate, in other words, the fraction that comes to the right of the division sign. So we will get 11 over 2 in this case multiplied by 3 over 11 instead of 11 over 3. So 11 over 2 multiplied by 3 over 11. So the first fraction we have 11 in the numerator, 11 over 2. And the second fraction we have 11 in the denominator, 3 over 11. So cross cancelling, the 11s would cancel out each other. So consequently, we have 3 times 1 over 2 times 1, okay, which is 3 over 2. Then we have to bring down the 9 over 5, so we get 3 over 2 plus 9 over 5. Between 2 and 5, the two, the two denominators are there. The LCM, the lowest common denominator, lowest common multiple, is 10. We say 2 into 10 is 5. And then we take the 5 and multiply it by the numerator, which is 3. Okay? So we get 15. We bring down the plus sign. Then we say 5 into 10 is 2. And 2 times 9 is 18. So we get 15 plus 18 over 10. 15 plus 18 is 33. So we get an improper fraction, 33 over 10. Now we have to take that improper fraction and convert it to a mixed number. So we see 10 can go into 33 three times. So we get 3 and uh, the remainder is 3 because 10, 3 is 30. And then we have 3 more to make 33. So 3 and 3 over 10. And that's our answer there for part 1 of A. For part 1A, 2 we are asked to calculate the exact value of 165 multiplied by the square of 0 0.38. The square of 0 0.38 is 0 0.1444. Now, multiplying 0 0.1444 by 165, we will get 23.826, which is our answer as an exact value. 1b says write your answer in aii which was 23.826 correct to one two decimal places now we have to count the decimal places the first decimal digit is eight the second one is two and the third one is six so we count and we put a line between the second and the third decimal place the digit in the third decimal place is greater than 5, it is 6. 
so since that it is greater than 5 we have to add 1 to the digit in the second decimal place and then drop the third decimal digit thereafter so for our answer we will get 23.83 because 2 plus 1 is 3 For part 2 of B, we have to express the number 23.826 correct to 3 significant figures. Let us count the significant digits we have. The first significant digit is the 2 in the whole number part of the decimal. So the first is 2, the second is 3, the third is 8 and the fourth is 2. So we have to put a line between the third and the fourth significant digits that's between the eight and the two the two which is to the right of the line that vertical line is less than five since it is less than five we have to drop everything to the right of the line and keep the 23.8 so our answer will be 23.8 correct to three significant figures our third approximation is to round off 23.8 to 6 correct to the nearest whole number. Our answer therefore should be a whole number and not a decimal. The whole number part of 23.8 to 6 is 23. Now we have to put a line to the right of the 3 which is a digit in the 1's place. So that's between the 3 and the 8. The 8 is greater than 5, therefore we have to add 1 to the 3. 3 plus 1 is 4, therefore our answer is approximately 24. 1C is based on consumer arithmetic. The question says Mr. Adams invested $5,000 at the credit union and received $5,810 inclusive of simple interest after three years. Determine the simple interest earned. Now simple interest in that case would be equal to the amount accrued which is the $5,810. Subtract the principal amount. The principal amount is the amount invested so that is five thousand eight hundred and ten dollars subtract five thousand dollars therefore our simple interest here for mr adams is eight hundred and ten dollars for cii we have to calculate the annual interest rate paid by the credit union now the formula for calculating the rate for simple interest is as follows rate equals 100 multiplied by the simple interest divided by the principal times the time in years or we say rate equals 100 i over pt now the interest the simple interest is 810 dollars as we got from part one of c so that's 100 times 810 divided by 5,000, which is a principal, $5,000 times 3 years, 3 years being the time. So we can cancel here because 100 in the numerator can cancel two zeros of the 5,000. And then the, the zero from the 810 can cancel out the next zero from the 5,000. Then we can say 3 into 3, 1, that's 3 in the denominator there, 3 into 3, 1, and 3 into 81 is 27. So we will get 27 over 5. 27 over 5, which is the same as 27 divided by 5, is 5.4. So our rate or the rate of interest paid by the credit union will be 5.4 percent part three of c ask us to determine the length of time it will take for mr adams investment to be doubled at the same rate of interest so when we say the time taken for his investment to be doubled we mean okay how long will it take for him to get 
his investment back with an additional amount as interest in, in the amount of the investment. So his investment was $5,000. So how many years would it take for him to get that $5,000 and another $5,000? Now, since we want to find the time, the formula we have to use is time equals 100i over PR, or 100 times the interest divided by the principal times the rate. So the interest, remember we said the interest would have to be $5,000 for his investment to be doubled. So that would be 100 times 5,000 and then you're going to divide the product by 5,000 which is the principal times 5.4% which is the rate, right? The, the credit union would pay as we got from the previous question. So 100 times 5,000 over 5,000 times 5.4. The 5,000 in the numerator will cancel off the 5,000 in the denominator and we would be left with 100 divided by 5.4. That would be 18 and a half. So the time it would take for Mr. Adams investment to be doubled at 5.4% rate of interest would be 18 and a half years. Let us recap our answers for 1A, 1, the answer was 3 and 3 tenths. For 1A, 2, the answer was 23.826. For part B of 1, I, the answer was 23.83. For part 2 of B, the answer was 23.8. And part 3 of B, the answer was 24. Part C, one, the answer was $810 as the simple interest. The rate paid by the credit union was 5.4% per annum per year. And uh, part three, the time it would take for Mr. Adams' investment to be doubled is 18 and a half years. Thank you all very much for being my audience and taking the time out to look at this video to the very end. It has been a pleasure. Do enjoy the rest of your day.